Do you know that the tourism industry in Africa is now the second fastest growing in the world, making Africa the second fastest growing region in the world, just after Asia Pacific, when it comes to tourism? Still not planning a trip yet? Oh well, now that you are, let me give you reasons to add Rwanda to that list. Hello everyone, this is your most dedicated tour guide on breathtaking trips across the African continent at Desua Osui. And today, I will be taking you to Rwanda with its vibrant culture, rich history and diverse landscape. Rwanda is the perfect place for a thrilling vacation from historical museums that inspire to incredible meals served high above the flashing lights of the city below. Rwanda is full of promise and wonder, and exploring it will leave you emotional and enlightened. Some of the most exhilarating things to do in this gorgeous country is hike with endangered mountain gorillas, visit towering volcanoes, or just lace by the bubbling lake Kivu. Look, don't believe what you've seen on television or in the news. Rwanda is not a homogeneous nation of poor, uneducated, and traumatized people in need of aid. The country is vibrant, diverse, and on the move. See for yourself. Colorful markets and idyllic lakes make Rwanda one of the most beautiful and unique countries on earth. Also, Rwandan customs, culture and history are specific to the country itself. Before we explore this beautiful African country, you should know there are some things you shouldn't do when in Rwanda. First, don't bring plastic bags into the country. Unlike many of its East African neighbors, Rwanda is incredibly clean and you'll almost never find litter on the streets. Don't be that tourist that tries to sneak one in because not only will it be confiscated at the airport, 
you'll also be going against one of the coolest and impactful environmental laws on the continent. Don't take pictures of Rwandans, both adults and children, without asking for permission first. Many find it offensive to be randomly photographed and so might ask for money in exchange. Begging is strongly discouraged by the government, so you're advised not to give money to beggars or children who ask. Eating in public, even if it's a cookie or chocolate bar, is frowned upon in Rwanda. You might be able to get away with it in Kigali, Rwanda's capital city, but in the countryside, it is considered rude and quite disrespectful. That goes for public smoking as well. Pointing with one finger is considerably or considered rude. When pointing, use all five fingers. Avoid talking about ethnicity or referencing the genocide as that remains a very sensitive subject. The 1994 Rwandan genocide was an undeniably tragic event. Too many lives were lost with many families torn apart. However, the country has worked incredibly hard to move beyond the genocide. Hence, casual and continual conversation about the events of April 1994 are discouraged. But if that's what you want to do, visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial for plenty of that and then embrace the country's exciting future instead of limiting your perception to its past. Speaking of the past, let's quickly delve into a bit of Rwanda's history. In the late 13th century, pastoral Tutsi tribes arrived from the south and conquered the Hutu and Twa inhabitants of Rwanda, establishing a feudal kingdom. A unified state was then established by King Kigeri Wabuguru during the 19th century, but this lasted only until 1890 when Rwanda briefly became a German province in East Africa. In 1916, the Belgians came and for personal gains and easy domination, started to divide the population into three different groups, an act that favored the Tutsi and helped sow seed of the infamous genocide. The Belgians sponsored the dominance of the Tutsi minority at the expense of the Hutu, but were forced in the 1960s to concede independence under majority Hutu rule. Violence between Hutus and Tutsis started to flare up, resulting in the Rwandan genocide of April 1994, a 100-day period of carnage where between 800,000 and 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed. As many as 10,000 people were killed per day, with 70% of the Tutsi population wiped out with non-interference from the international community. Although at the brewing stage of the violence, Belgian peacekeepers were sent to Rwanda, but 10 of them were murdered, which resulted in the defend yourself only order and then an eventual withdrawal. Hutu leaders used radio broadcasts to incite genocide, broadcast mis misinformation and identify Tutsi targets and their locations. Hundreds of thousands of women were raped including nearly every survivor over the age of 12. Bill Clinton, US president at the time, admitted that the genocide was one of history's greatest failures and one of his personal failures. The killings ended when the Tutsi RPF took control of Rwanda on July 16, 1994. Rwanda today is very peaceful. While the genocide cannot be forgotten, especially with the number of memorials scattered around the country, there have been efforts to heal, like the outlawing of talks of ethnicity. This period of calm has helped Rwanda grow into one of, the Africa's, one of Africa's most progressive nations throughout the 21st century. There have been a higher percentage of women in Rwanda's parliament than in any other country on earth. And the country has implemented a number of pioneering conservation initiatives, including the banning of plastic bags in 2008 and successfully reintroducing lions into the country in 2015 after a 15 years absence. The government of Rwanda has also embarked on projects that will help create a new positive identity for modern day Rwanda. Once in a month, Rwandans participate in an activity called Omuganda, a national housekeeping day where everyone, including the president, take on diverse community services. Home to 12.2 million people, making it one of the most densely populated nations in Africa, Rwanda is the third greenest place in the world and proud home to four national parks. The country has a tough stance on corruption, making it one of the least corrupt countries in Africa. 
Rwanda is a multicultural and multilingual country. Its official languages are Kenya Rwanda, French and English. Although English became the official language for education in 2008, Swahili is widely spoken in its towns and is still the major means of communication, especially with neighboring countries. Christianity is very prevalent in Rwanda. More than two-fifths of its population is Roman Catholic, more than one-third Protestant, and more than one-tenth Adventist. Muslims, atheists, and other beliefs collectively amount for less than one-tenth of the population. Let's get into the cuisine of Rwanda. Yes, food. Food in Rwanda is a key part of its culture, and so trying them out is a wonderful way to gain insight into its traditional life. Most of the locals do not cook using recipes, but rather using tradition passed on by parents or grandparents. These add something very special to every dish, a bit of tradition in every bite. Popular traditional Rwandan dishes you should absolutely try are a sombe, a staple meal in Rwanda made by combining fresh vegetables and peanut butter. Cassava leaves are pounded and boiled until tender. Spinach, onion, bell peppers and eggplants are then added and cooked until tender as well. Peanut butter and oil are added and everything cooked together until the paste is formed. A sombe can be served with rice or bread. Agatogo or plantain stew spiced up with meat, fish or vegetables eaten at lunchtime. Then there is ugali, it's porridge made from maize and water paste. Ibirai is the Rwandan version of home fries. Baby potatoes are sliced in half, boiled in spices and then fried in local butter on a skillet. And then bruschetta. Rwanda's national dish is grilled meat or fish on a stick laced with vegetables, onions, and local spices. Akabenz is roasted and marinated pork. And aside being very tasty, these dishes will complete your Rwandan experience. Here is something fascinating. Most Rwandans brew their own beer and alcoholic beverages. Beer often features in Rwanda's traditional rituals and is generally consumed by men. Rwandan cuisine is simple yet unique, but as I always say, if you're not very experimental with food, eat what you know. There are numerous restaurants in Rwandan cities that serve French, Indian, Chinese, Italian and other African cuisines at considerably affordable prices. Now, join me in exploring Rwanda's captivating national treasures or attraction sites like most of us would like to call them. Let's start with the Nyungwe Forest National Park, 
one of the most important forest conservations in all of Africa. The Yungwe Forest National Park contains a spectacular array of biodiversity, including over 1,000 species of plants, 322 species of birds, and 75 types of mammals like chimpanzees, the black and white colobus monkeys, all faced monkeys with beak like noses, and the blue monkeys. Most people visit this rainforest to track chimpanzees. Hanging out with primates isn't the only thing to do in Yungwe. The park is also home to the only canopy walk in East Africa. You will get to walk across a 91 meter long suspension bridge dangling more than 50 meters above the verdant rainforest, getting a dizzying view of the treetops and mountains in the distance. If you have a fear of heights though, just skip the canopy tour and instead walk along one of the park's 15 hiking trails for an invigorating adventure that does not contend with gravity. Another is the Volcanoes National Park. Um, gorilla trekking in Volcanoes National Park is Rwanda's most famous tourist attraction. This national park is home to a growing number of critically endangered mountain gorillas. Experts estimate that there are about 600 gorillas in the park. The trekking experience typically lasts between four and eight hours, most of which is spent hiking through mystical bamboo forest, wild meadows, and swampy areas. Guides from the National Park um, will eventually lead you to one of the habituated gorilla families. Gorilla trekking in Rwanda is largely considered a safe activity as the gorillas are mostly apathetic to their human visitors. However, armed guides who use clicking sounds to communicate with the gorillas help keep guests safe from potential dangers, making the experience one that you'll never forget. While here, you should take out time to visit Dianfosi's grave. Dianfosi is an American zoologist who spent nearly two decades studying the primates in Rwanda. Fosi moved to Volcanoes National Park in 1967, where she spent days in isolation studying the creatures and raising awareness about the threat of poaching in an attempt to save the animals from extinction. She succeeded, but was murdered in the process by an unknown assailant. Her gravestone next to the research center she founded has become a pilgrimage for naturalists. Akagera National Park is a safe safari just two and a half hours away from Kigali. Akagera and its biodiversity have made an incredible recovery from near decimation after the Rwandan genocide. It now boasts all of a wide range of animals like lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, and hippos, along with an abundance of birds, antelope, as well as Nile crocodiles. The landscape itself is just as spectacular as the animals that live there. The environment is a glorious transition from savanna plains to wetlands and lakes. Also, check out the Genocide Memorial Center. In 1994, approximately 800,000 Tutsis and scores of Hutus, the two main groups in Rwanda, were murdered by Hutu extremists during the tragic Rwandan genocide. The Kigali Genocide Memorial Museum pays tribute to these victims, many of whom are buried in a mass grave outside the memorial, and chronicles the events that led to the slaughter. The Hunting Museum dives into the timeline that led to the 1994 genocide, bringing the horrors to life through hauls of photographs, artifacts, and information. The museum continues with another permanent exhibit on the history of genocide around the world and intervention efforts from international communities, helping to put the Rwandan genocide into context. The museum also includes an emotionally charged children's room dedicated to the youngest victims of the genocide. It keeps their memory alive through portraits of the children, some of whom were just infants when they were killed. And personal details about the victims like their nicknames and favorite books. Though heartbreaking, visiting the Kigali Genocide Memorial is an important part of experiencing Rwanda. One of Africa's best collections of ethnological and archaeological artifacts can be found in Rwanda's Ethnographic Museum. Belgium gifted the museum to the city in 1989 in honor of the 25th anniversary of Rwanda's independence. The Ethnographic Museum's seven galleries will take you back in time to pre-colonial Rwanda. You'll see an impressive collection of woven baskets, traditional garments made from animal hides and woven grass, spears and bows, musical drums from hundreds of years ago, and as well as old farming tools. The museum also hosts live handicraft demonstrations if you're interested in picking up a new skill. 
Also, explore the Gorilla Guardians Village. Volcanic National Park isn't just a place to see gorillas. It is also a prime spot to get soaked in Rwandan culture. At the Gorilla Guardians Village, you'll learn how to carry a basket on your head like the Rwandan women do with your own basket, shoot an arrow and grind grains with a heavy stone. The enthusiastic guides make the entire experience feel like a big party. You might also want to stick around for the interior dance recitals at the village. The traditional dancers, decked out with long straw wigs and skirts, put on an exciting show to the beat of rhythmic drumming. If the country's conservation efforts don't convince you that Rwandans have a reverence for animals, a visit to the King's Palace Museum certainly will. Major attractions at the museum are the sacred cows with staggering large horns. Throughout the day, traditional singers lull the cows into a mellow state by reciting poems, a ritual that's unique to Rwanda. The very interesting museum showcases a replica of a king's palace from the 15th century with a thatched roof, royal hut, and fresh milk hut traditionally run by unmarried women. You can also explore the colonial style home that was once the royal residence of King Mutara III in the mid 20th century. The interior design is particularly striking, blending Rwandan patterns with European style furniture. After all your outdoor adventures, there's no better place to relax than at Lake Kivu. The 2,700 square kilometer emerald green oasis surrounded by misty mountains is Rwanda's largest lake. Don't miss out on Rubavu, a resort town on the tip of Lake Kivu that has a lively waterfront, sandy beach and stunning resort. A few days in this peaceful town will leave you restored. Your tour guide can arrange a stunning sunset kayak trip with a singing fisherman on Lake Kivu, as well as multi-day paddling adventures that will leave you in awe. By now, you already know what's next is festivals. Yes, Rwandan festivals are focused on the country's rich culture and art. From events that celebrate the long-standing culture of visual art, like the Hollywood Film Festival, to those using theatre as a vehicle of social change, like the Centre by Centre Festival, there is something to suit your artistic taste. The gorilla naming ceremony called the Kwita Itzina. Since 2005, the Kwita Itzina ceremony is held annually to celebrate newborn gorillas and name them, mainly for the purpose of creating awareness on conservation efforts of endangered species around the world. The gorilla naming ceremony is influenced by a similar one for humans, where members of the local Rwanda community gather to recommend names for a newborn child. In this version, the park guides do the suggesting and ultimately choose the names of all the newly born gorillas. The ceremony is characterized by great display of music and traditional dances. While attending, you can choose to sponsor a gorilla if you like. Another popular film festival in Rwanda is the Rwanda Film Festival, popularly called Hollywood. Founded in 2005, the Rwandan Film Festival is held annually for seven days. Most of the screenings take place in venues around Kigali, but as part of a drive to bring culture to the farthest corners of this country, pop-up cinemas showing everything from Hollywood blockbusters to contemporary African documentaries are erected in the countryside. Hollywood is a highlight in the country's cultural calendar. Make a point of attending if you're interested in learning more about culture or simply looking to see a good film. The messages of most pieces stem from the effects of the Rwandan genocide and are quite powerful. The theatre festival not only forms the baseline for critical discussion, but is also a process of healing. In September every year, the lively outdoor Rwandan music festival Kigali Up takes place. The event brings together local artists from several genres, including traditional folk music, R&B, and Rwandan pop. It also sees artists from across the world gracing the stage every year. The aim is to cross genre and create a community of artists who collaborate to make the Rwandan music industry stronger than it already is. 
Rwanda is the proud host of Africa's greatest cycling race, commonly known as Tour de Rwanda. Initially, Tour de Rwanda was a regional cycling race that brought together Rwandan riders and others from neighboring Burundi, Tanzania, and Uganda. But currently, the race has attracted other countries across the continent. The annual ceremony is always held in Kinigi, Volcanoes National Park and always bring together thousands of locals, regional and international guests to support the growing tourism industry in Rwanda as well as the government's conservation efforts of the mountain gorillas. Rounding off Rwanda's festival calendar is the Festival Art Azimuth held in October, a feast of the arts. Fars bring together dancers, musicians, theatre makers and visual artists from both Rwanda and abroad. There are also many renowned speakers who are invited to give talks to inspire the values of love, hope and faith in the festival goers. Rwanda's economy is ranked 15th fastest growing in the world. It is the safest and cleanest country in Africa, earning it the tag Singapore of Africa. Visiting Rwanda is definitely an exhilarating experience, one to be relieved over and over again. But be sure to adhere to all safety measures while there. Hire a guide to take you on the adventure, especially in the countryside. Wear comfortable hiking shoes for the mountain experience and rent a 4x4 vehicle for the safari experience. Also, visiting Rwanda is very easy from any part of Africa, as well as from any part of the world. Simply visit or contact the Rwandan embassy or consulate in your country to find out about the travel requirements for your country. Don't just surf the web as you might end up frustrated. The Rwandan franc, RWF, is the official currency in Rwanda. One US dollar is equivalent to about 900 and 975 Rwandan franc. A trip to Rwanda for you and your companion for one week would cost an average $340. That's it on Exploring Rwanda. Let me know what part of the country held your gaze and also where you want to go next. Remember to follow and like TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. I am Adesu LC and I'm committed to helping you through my eyes discover and explore Africa. See you in the next country.